This morning, I'm continuing on with that thought, what in the world, uh, what on earth is going on? So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1 this morning. Ephesians chapter 1 is where we are headed. And here again, I'm, uh, I'm going to be jumping uh, from a lot of different places, and here's what I need from you. Uh, I, need, uh, I need you to have your Bibles open I need you to see some things. You say, Pastor, it's going to be on the big screen. I get that, but here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that these words in which I speak, they come from the Word of God. It's not something that I fabricated. It's not something that I come up with. Uh, they come from the Word of God. And, and if we are going to stand as a church... If we are going to stand as the suffering in this life continues to unfold and in fact only get worse, we are going to have to have the Word of God to stand on. Not the words of a pastor. Not the words of a great leader. We are going to need the Word of God to stand upon. Amen? That's why it's so important that you bring your Bibles. And, and, and here we put a little section inside your bulletin right on the back side. Check it out. Uh, that's just for you. Uh, th that's not just for you to look at or to take up space on a page. That's for you to write some things down. And I, how important it is to write some things down. That way God can recall those thoughts back to us. And we can see exactly what the Lord has in store for us. So here we go. Uh, what in the world is going on? And here's what we're talking about today. Are you ready? Uh, not just what in the world is going on, but watch this. What in heaven is happening? What in heaven is happening? Uh, it's a very real question, right? If, if we believe that heaven is real... Something is happening in heaven today. And I want to begin to understand, uh, Lord Jesus, we see what's going on in our world today. And, and, and I know that uh, we only think with a very small, especially pastor, very small portion of our brains and, and portion of our minds. And we are only able to see a very small window and a very small portion of what really is going on around us. But Lord, this morning, I just, want to, I just want to catch a glimpse of what's going on in heaven. Amen? Uh, we see some of the, the things that it's ha is happening in our world and, and how it continues to progress. And it seems like it's, it's not getting slower. In, in fact, we've got high-speed internet that, uh, you know, it's supposed to make things so much faster. We've got smartphones. We've got computers. We've got all of these things that are supposed to give us more time. When was the last time you found yourself with a good glass of sweet tea or lemonade sitting on a front porch or a back porch? And there's many of us that can't even remember when that was. When it used to be a daily thing, what's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. This world is spinning. It, it, it is moving and things are happening so fast. We are drawing nigh unto that final day when the Lord Jesus, He will close and finish it all. What in heaven is happening so the question is this morning is this. Are you ready? What are you doing, God? What's going on up there? And before and as we begin to think through that, we must understand. Uh, we believe in God the Father. And we also believe in Christ the Son. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. But the three make God in one. And let me begin with something very basic to the Christian understanding. Very basic to the Christian life. And many people, they, they find themselves perplexed with this thought of, of God uh, being three persons in one. Let me help you with that. Uh, hillbilly definition. Are you ready? 
Uh, don't shoot the messenger here, but I, I think this is a good illustration that we can begin to really grapple with how high-minded God is. Are you ready? Now, to this church, uh, who am I? I'm Pastor PJ, right? Uh, but, watch this, to my sweetheart, baby, who am I? I'm honey, right? I'm honey, Madison. And to my kids, what am I? I'm dad. And now it would be crazy to think that I could stand up here and you all call me father. Not happening. You can't call me dad, all right? I'm, I'm probably not going to answer Austin if you try to call me dad. It's just not going to work, all right? Now, if you call me pastor, you'll have my attention. And, and Austin, don't you dare call me honey, all right? That's just for that one, all right? You're off limits. Do you see? I'm still the same person. But yet to... All of you, I'm different. I'm not the same person, but I am the same person. See, we believe in God the Father. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. But yet with God, we have God incarnate, His Son. Uh, what do you mean? He was still yet in the beginning. Go back and read Genesis and watch this. He'll still be around come the end of the age in Revelations. God the Son. And I'm super thankful this morning that God the Father and God the Son didn't leave me without a comforter. But yet when Jesus ascended, He said, I will send you a comforter. You say, Pastor, what's the comforter? It is the blessed Holy Spirit of God. The one that I feel this morning. The one that fills me this morning. The one that allows the hair on the back of my neck to stand up in His presence. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So what are you doing, God? Well, let's first start with God the Father. God the Father, what are you doing? And here's the first thing that I think He would say. Are you ready? I'm not dead! <laughs> Here it is. God is not dead! He is alive today like He has been forever. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. He is without the number of days. He was before worlds was. He is the Father God and He is not dead. Watch this. In fact, He is still sovereign God what does that mean? That means he's got control over everything. He is holy. There is none like him. And when I say holy, I, 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 I'm, I'm talking he is the essence of holiness. He doesn't have to be holy. He is holy. And not only holy, but watch this. He said back in the book of Exodus, I am. Isn't that enough? What, what, what do you mean? Unfold that for me. If you need something, He is what you need. It doesn't matter what you need. God will be what you need. I am, He said. Watch this. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. That's what that word means. Omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He's omniscient. He is all-knowing. There is nothing that He doesn't know. He's omnipresent. He's all-present. He's everywhere. In fact, one writer said it this way. The earth is the Lord's and the 
fullness thereof belongs to Him. If I ascend into the heavens, aren't thou there? If I ascend to the earth, thou art there. If I descend into the depths of the earth, thou art there. He fills everything. You can't escape God. Isn't that good? You can go ahead and try to hide from Him. You can, uh, hey, you can build a swimming pool as deep as you want. You still can't lose the presence of God. First point is this. God the Father, God is not dead. Secondly, God is seated. Now that don't need... Here it is, ready? God is seated. What do you mean? I mean He's seated in the throne in heaven. Watch this. God can do everything that God needs to do while He's sitting down. He's sitting there like, hey, Buckeyes, no problem. You know? TCU, no problem, Eli. God is seated. That means He has complete authority, complete control of every situation. He doesn't need to stand up. You missed a good place for an amen. Watch this. He is unshakable. He is unmoving. In fact, Psalms 121.4 says, He does not sleep, nor does He slumber. We can't even wrap our mind around a God like this. He doesn't get excited over anything. Everything is under control. Even when we can't comprehend the madness around us. He's sitting on His throne. There's nothing that surprises Him. There's nothing that takes Him off guard. He's got it. He's got it. Watch this. In the palm of His hand. Not only is God not dead, but God is seated. And thirdly, mark this, God is not changing. Let's drill down on our scripture here this morning. Ephesians chapter 1. There's a whole lot of things that I could point out, even in this first chapter, that points right in the direction of what in heaven, what in heaven is happening. That God, what are you doing Man, he's doing so much even right here in just one chapter that we read. But look at this. In verse 1, Paul, an apostle to Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. That's you and me, people. Look at this. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father. But somebody said he was dead. Really? Really? He's not dead here. He's speaking directly to us. In fact, if you're a Christian at all, you've already talked to Him this morning. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and I love when He talks back. And God is not changing. Verse 11. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's read 10 together. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together... In one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in Him. What are you saying? Here's what He's doing. He's putting everything in order. He's putting everything together. Even God looks upon the earth and separates the earth from heaven. What on earth is going on? What in heaven is happening? Look at verse 11 with me. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him, here it is, who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. 
You didn't get it. God's not changing. God's doing what God needs to do. He's not really coming to you for counsel. He's really not coming to you to figure it out. In fact, you think you might know and you, you might have a better solution. You might have a better way. You know, God, if, if it would have been me, I wouldn't have sent my son. God has His will and His way. It's God on purpose. And here's what God's not doing. God's not about to change His mind. You know, humanity's been trying to change God's mind for ever since we were created. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? You know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm party coming up on Friday. You know what's going to be going on there. You know you shouldn't be going. And you say, but God, God, I can, I, I can witness there. I can live for you in front of those people. And God's looking at you going, well, it didn't work the last time. What makes you think it's going to work this time? See, God's not changing. God's not changing His mind for us. Not only His will, but watch this. God's not changing His direction. You see, the way that this whole thing is going to come to an end, God had it figured out a long time ago. And God is the only one that knows how it's going to end. And He's not changing His mind. It is coming to an end. In fact, I read to you that passage. This world will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But watch this. His word will never pass away. It will be standing when everything else is just dust. And it will come to pass. Everything that you read in this word, it will happen as he said it would. His direction is not changing. His love is not changing. God loves you so supremely, we can't even wrap our mind or conceive the love that God has for us. We think we know, we don't know. God's love is not changing toward you and God's work, His work is not changing towards you. You've got to see this. I want to show it to you. It's found in Romans. Romans 8.28 Many of you know it by heart. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Do you see that? What are you saying, Pastor? Here's what I'm saying. His work, His work is not changing. Even though it looks to us that it's checkmate, God always has a final move. And in fact, when, when you look at your life and you know it looks like a cake coming together in pieces, and if you take a piece or an ingredient to that cake by itself, it doesn't taste very good, does it? In fact, go ahead and eat those raw eggs by themselves. They don't taste very good, do they? Take some of that flour and, and eat it by itself. Take some of the sugar. Now, sugar, you might be able to handle that one, right? But you go ahead and take some of that sodium or the, the salt and uh, you take that ingredient by itself. It doesn't taste very good. But after Dennis takes that ingredient and he puts it all together and adds a blam of chocolate chips. Somebody say amen right there. Huh? And he throws it in the oven and sets the temperature for, I'm guessing here, Dennis, 350, 325, I don't know what it is, whatever it is, but he puts it in the oven and, he, and he, he's got it there and all of a sudden 
The aroma fills the room. And he pulls them out. And he lets them sit for just a moment. And then he allows us to take a little bit of heaven. Huh? You say, Pastor, you've lost your mind. No, I'm saying this. God's got it figured out. It looks like your life is a mess. It looks like this piece and that ingredient and that ingredient. And by itself, it is no good. But you wait. When God is finished with you, He will, He will make a little bit of heaven out of you. God is not changing. He's not changing His will, His direction, His love, or His work. That's what God's up to. God the Father. How about God the Son? Well, I'm glad you ask. Is He, is he mentioned in this, this first chapter, Ephesians? Introduce Jesus in verse 1. And then verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father, God the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according, to, according as He hath chosen us in Him. Watch this. Important. Before the foundation of the world. You see that? So Jesus, what are you doing? Hey God the Son, what's up? What have you been up to? Here it is. Verse 20 is about to tell us. Which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, and here it is, and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places. Hey Jesus, what's going on? I'm sitting here by God the Father. You see it? Jesus is at God's right hand. And it says this. He's sitting down too. In fact, he's like, finished on Calvary. But not only is he sit sitting at the right hand of God. But you've got to see this. This is great stuff. Sometimes God the Son stands. Do you know that? In fact, let me show you one of those times. You're going to love it. It's found in Acts chapter 7 and verse 55. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Say, Pastor, where are we at? Here we, here, here we go. Are you ready? The New Testament church is launching. And there's one by the name of Stephen that is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they've captured him. In fact, we are right there at the moment when they are about to stone him to death. That's right. And look what it says. 55. But he, who? Who's he? Stephen. But Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, watch this. He looked up steadfastly into heaven. All right? We, 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 we just sang that song a little bit ago. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. And there we see Stephen. Stephen in those final moments when he's about to be stoned to death. Because of his belief in Jesus Christ. And look what he saw. He looked up steadfastly unto heaven. And look at this. We want to see. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. And 
Stephen saw Jesus. You say, what was, what was Jesus up to? What was he doing when he saw him? He looked up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the glory of God sitting on the throne and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You say, Pastor, why was God Jesus standing in that moment because he knew one of his was being afflicted because of him? Don't tell me Jesus never stands. What makes Him stand is for us. Boy, that's powerful right there. I'm wondering how, I'm just uh, off topic, all right? I'm wondering how many times that Jesus has got up off of the throne on the right hand of God and stood for you. I can think of one moment where I know He stood up for me. It was when I was lost in my sin and made my way to an old-fashioned altar. And I promise you, Jesus in that moment stood to His feet and said, Come, Son. Not only did He do it for me, but He done it for you. Jesus, what are you doing? Sometimes I stand. Romans chapter 8 and verse 34. Don't mess it. Romans chapter 8 and verse 34. Something else he does. Who is he that condemneth? Question mark. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. See it? Who also maketh intercession for us. Want to know what Jesus is up to? Watch this. When you need something from God the Father. That's why we pray In Jesus' name. Because Jesus hears from us and looks to the Father and says, Father, would you be with them? Aren't you thankful that we have an intercessor in Jesus Christ? You say, Pastor, what's the son up to? He's not doing much. (laughs) You kidding? He's at God's right hand. Secondly, where's Jesus? Watch this. I love this part too. I love it all. He's preparing a place for me. In fact, I read that passage to you last week. It's found there in John chapter 14 and verse 2. Look at what it says. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believeth in God, believe also in me. Look at here. In my Father's house are many mansions. What in heaven is happening? Here it is. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Here, watch this. Jesus, what are you doing? I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Say, Jesus, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just building some things. You come to me, I'll start building some things. Jesus, what are you building? I'm building a place for you. That where I am, he said, you can be also. (laughs) He's preparing a place for me in John chapter 14 and verse 2. But watch this. Thirdly, what, what, Jesus, what are you up to? Thirdly, get this one. He's ready. What's he ready for? He's ready to come get us. Why does God keep Jesus so close? 
Why is Jesus at his right hand? It's because in the twinkling of an eye, the Father in heaven will look to the Son and say, Son, it's time. Go get my children. And you mark this down. In that moment, God the Father will not even be hardly able to get it, the words off of His tongue. And you mark this, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be up off of that, that throne at the right hand of God and down Hallelujah Boulevard He'll go and He'll split the eastern sky and in like manner He's coming after us. He's ready to come get us. That's what God the Father's up to. That's what God the Son's up to. So what's God the Holy Spirit up to? Spirit, what are you doing? Back to John chapter 14. Look here in verse 12 is where I'm going to start. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Here it is. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. That's what Jesus said. Look at 13. And whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 14, I'm getting closer. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. And he may abide with you forever. I heard it described this way from an old free will Baptist preacher. That day that we read about in the first chapter of the book of Acts, when Jesus is standing with the crowd and he is about to ascend back to his Father in heaven. You remember I read it to you last week. Jesus steps out on that cloud and he and just like an elevator, he hits the up arrow. And the cloud begins to take him up. You remember what it said? It said the disciples and the apostles, they stood there and they were gazing into the heavens as Jesus ascended. And the angel said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? This same Jesus that is leaving will return in like manner. So in my sanctified imagination, may I say that Jesus stepped on that elevator that day, and that elevator took Him all the way up, beyond the Milky Way galaxy, beyond what, what science has allowed us to be able to see. And He ascended back, to his father in heaven. Now about the time that that elevator. Would reach to the top. And before Jesus would step out. On that golden street. You see the angels had been preparing for that day. In fact that orator. That great angelic orator. He wrote some of the most beautiful words to give a homecoming speech to Jesus Christ as he came back home to the Father. In fact, the one that is in charge of the choirs, he taught him a brand new song just for Jesus. Everyone had taken their place. They knew that Jesus was on his way. And the elevator reached the top and the doors came open and Jesus the Christ, God the Son, stepped out on that street 
And the gates of the city flew open. And Jesus, with his head held low, he walked into the city. Now watch this. That great orator stuck his chest out, opened up his wings, and began to speak those great words. And Jesus, with his head down, looking straight with one thing on his mind, continued to walk right on past. You say, boy, that was rude. He got a little closer to where God the Father's holies of holies was or is. And all of a sudden that choir began to sing and their wings spread abroad and it was a song that they had never sang before. And Jesus with one thing on his mind, he walked right past them. Never acknowledging the beauty of the, of the music. Because there was one thing on his mind. Jesus made his way to the throne room of God the Father. And he found himself on his knees before his Father in heaven. And said, God, those people down there aren't like us. They need something. They need you and I with them. And at that moment that Jesus the Christ said to the Father, they need some help. They need a comforter. They need someone out of the heart of God. Left He the Holy Spirit of God. And He ran and hit the down button. And down He came. And the comforter is with us. And here today living inside of us. You say, what is God up to? Here it is. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this. He's the one that has pursued you. He's the one that got you here this morning. He's never stopped pursuing you. He's been pursuing you all of His life. All of your life, He's been pursuing you. Who else is this Holy Spirit? Watch this. He's the power that is within us. You say, power that's in us? What do you mean? This is why I always say from the pulpit, don't try to clean your life up first and then come to Jesus. Come to Jesus And let the presence of the Holy Spirit, let the power of the Holy Spirit, let Him change you. There's some things that you're not going to be able to get away from. You're not going to be able to let go of without the power of the Holy Spirit. The power in us. Now watch this. What else is God the Holy Spirit up to? Protecting us. Protecting us. You know, the Bible says that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. How does he do that from heaven? Through the Holy Spirit. How does God fill my life, Pastor? You know, I've heard you quote that verse in in Revelations where it says that He stands at the door and knocks. And if I open the door of my heart, that He will come in. How does that happen? The Holy Spirit of God. You say, so it's just the Spirit. No, it's God. See, don't take anything away from the Holy Spirit. Don't add anything to the Holy Spirit because that's blasphemy. Let the Holy Spirit be who the Holy Spirit is. And the Holy Spirit as the Son, as the Father are three in one. You say, who lives inside of me? God lives inside of me. Hey God, what are you up to? What are you doing? What in heaven is happening? We see what God the Father's doing. We see what God the Son's doing. We see what God the Holy Spirit's doing. But you and I both know that He's not done. 
Because God continues to forgive. God continues to create. God continues to give. But in closing, let me share this last thing that God does. I can't wait to see it for myself. But did you know that God celebrates? That's right. You know, I don't know what that looks like. I mean, I've got this picture of him sitting on his throne, right? And he's sitting there. He's got that long beard. Right? Right, Joe? Joe, he's got that that long white beard. I'm I'm just trying to picture, picture him excited. I'm like... What, what? You're celebrating? And yeah. In fact, the Bible does say that God celebrates. In fact, it's a celebration that you and I can't even begin to wrap our mind around. We can't even begin to comprehend the celebration that happens in heaven. You say, Pastor, you've lost your mind. Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. Here's what it says. I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, right? This is God incarnate. He says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So what are you saying? What's this celebration all about? Here's the celebration when one that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, when they acknowledge their sin and they ask for forgiveness and ask Jesus to come inside your life, boom, 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 the fireworks in heaven goes off and the celebration begins. In fact, let me tell you how Jesus celebrates. This wasn't in my notes. This is free. (laughs) Jesus celebrates this way. He goes, after the roar. And can I say something? You better read Revelations. You say, man, this preacher is loud. He's got the biggest mouth. What is going on? Why is he so loud all the time? Look, he's, he's lost his voice already this morning. Hey, I'm just warming up for heaven. Everywhere I read, everywhere I read, you read chapter 1, chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And guess what? It doesn't stop until he closes it in 21. There is great noise. There is great noise in heaven today. (laughs) Where was I? Free. This is what Jesus does. Right in the middle of the celebration, Jesus says, Bring me my book. And you might look at me this morning and say, What book? Jesus says, Bring me my book. In fact, Revelation says that this book belongs to Jesus only. He is the only one that is able to open it up. He's the only one that is able to look upon. He's the only one that's able to read it. And in that moment that you and I come to Him in salvation, in the middle of the celebration, He says, bring me my book. And He takes the book of the sky and He opens it. And He grabs a pen And he dips it in his precious blood. And in that book, he writes our name in the Lamb's book of life. And the Bible says it's never to be blotted out. It's never to be erased. And one of these days when he comes in like manner, he's going to come carrying his book and he's going to receive us to be with him forever in glory. Amen. Amen. Rapture. So if Jesus... God the Father was here this morning, we'd say, what you been up to? He'd say, that's all. That's it. 
all in a day's work. Think you've done something plowing that field, planting? Think you've done something building that building? Look what God has done. Look what He is doing. Right now as we sit here, God is at work. And His work, watch this, His work revolves around us. What? Yeah. Everything that He does, everything that He's ever done, everything He'll ever do is for you. That's all. That's all He's doing. You're worried about what in the world is going on? God the Father says, here's what's happening in heaven. As we bow our heads and close our eyes across the building this morning.